welcome back. I am here with CEO Brad Hudson, and he's going to tell us what he knows about all the things happening in our village. Good morning, Mr. Hudson. Good morning. Thanks for having me again. Oh, thanks for being here. You have some exciting news about the GRF capital plan that you'll be uh, talking about later today. Yeah, we're having a meeting today at uh, 9.30 uh, in the boardroom. Residents are certainly welcome to come and give their input, where I'll be sharing with the board uh, some preliminary ideas about the, the kind of projects mm -hmm. that GRF should consider funding for next year. Okay, any highlights about those projects? Well, probably the biggest thing are the, the gates. Uh, uh, gates five and six have been very successful. We'd like to do some more. And so we're recommending uh, eight more gates. Wow. Of course, which ones? <laughs> um, everyone wants to know if theirs is being done. So yes, one, two, three, four, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten okay. are the recommended gates. That's certainly subject to the board's uh, discretion, mm -hmm. but we think those are the most important ones to do now. Mm -hmm. And so we've also included a recommendation. Well, it's not so much a recommendation, but uh, a proposal for gate 12, oh, which okay. leads into Clubhouse 2 and the golf course. Uh, lawn bowling, that area. It's a more complicated gate because mm. it has to be moved and the whole uh, geometrics of that entrance have to be changed. Yes. And so it's a little more expensive, a lot more expensive. And, yeah. and so they may decide to defer that for a year uh, or do it uh, in 18. I don't know, we'll, but we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, we've got some funding for the Performing Arts Center that's nice. recommended. Okay. Um, there's a lot of equipment in there. Um, one of the things, and we talked about uh, this with you before mm -hmm. is transitioning our transit system yes. from having these big diesel buses that are empty uh, to smaller, more uh, agile vehicles that can get into cul-de-sacs, that can p take people quickly, directly where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And so there's a proposal to begin implementing that kind of program. And then lastly, uh, a, a series of proposals to update and, and do maintenance projects on our mini clubhouses. Right, those clubhouses are so beautiful, but they do need a little touching up. They do, and there's been a lot of deferred maintenance over the years, so we're very excited about, uh, and we started that this year. We did a lot of work on showers and locker rooms. We okay. did a big dry rot program at Clubhouse 4. That's right. And so for next year, we're gonna continue that work to, to fix these, uh, clubhouses up and to, to do the maintenance that really should be done on a, a more regular basis. So all of these things are going to be spoken about today at 930. In the boardroom. In the boardroom. So if uh, residents want to come and be a part of that conversation and listen in and hear about the whole new plan for 2018, they should be there to see you. Yeah, come on down. Yeah, right. we'd like to have you. would like to hear your thoughts on, on projects you like. Uh, uh, maybe even on things you don't like. Uh, we'll <laughs> listen to that too. So yeah, come on down. We need to hear from everyone. Uh, and so it's exciting time. Well, that's the conversation today. But you've had other conversations this week with our Media and Communications Committee. Uh, that was on Tuesday of this week right. or Monday? That was on Monday, I believe. Monday of this week. And you brought up several really key items there too. So any highlights from that? Well, I think, and I talked to you about this before, probably the, the really the biggest, most exciting Thing, and there are uh -huh. a number of them that are exciting, but is the internet service. And that yes. we are on the cusp, really only weeks away, from being able to triple every resident's bandwidth at zero cost. So we're very excited about That's that. That's impressive. And that, that, most of that work has been done. We just really need to get the final approval uh, mm -hmm. from the GRF board, and then we'll be able to implement that. So we're very excited about that. Um, and obviously you'd be interested in this, um, you know, uh, about, God, it's almost been a year ago now when I <laughs> shared uh, a vision mm -hmm. uh, with GRF about uh, TV6 right. and where it should move in the future. Right. And there was a whole bunch of strategic initiatives which, which they agreed with. And so we're starting to implement a lot of that. One of the first ones was adding HD. And so we've got HD studio cameras, sure. HD cameras in two clubhouses, HD cameras in the boardroom. And so we're broadcasting in HD. What a difference it makes. I mean, look, I don't look <laughs> this good. It's all the HD. Um, you look great. Anyway, so that's a, that's a big deal. Another mm -hmm. thing was to rebrand TV6 because mm -hmm. guess what? It's not on channel six exclusively anymore. It's all over the dial. That's right. So calling it TV6 is kind of irrelevant 
when it's on so many different uh, uh, dial positions. So some new names have been tossed around. Well, I think we have settled in on Village Television. That sounds and great. And so it'll be in a number of positions. Uh, it, it'll have, we're still working on the final uh, design mm -hmm. elements of that. Yes. But it's very exciting to move forward with that. Something else, I don't want to miss this. <laughs> we also had uh, uh, approval for a new uh, social media campaign. It's so important. It's very exciting and uh, in addition to communicating with residents in the outside world in new and exciting ways, yes. it also provides opportunity uh, for us to host, you know, 260 clubs uh, in, the, in the village environment, digital environment, uh, mm -hmm. uh, with without having to create all those separate websites by bringing them underneath our Facebook and having uh, uh, their presence available to residents in a very efficient and, and quick cohesive. way. Cohesive. Cohesive. It's yes. really, there's so many things. We're very excited and, and uh, we have a, I, I don't remember the number, but I think it's something like 10,000 Facebook uh, pages or really? accounts in this village. Oh my so goodness. Our residents are already out there. Yes. And I'm sure they're they're sharing pictures of their grandkids and, and their sure. kids and uh, family accomplishments and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, we'd like to, to the extent they're willing, bring some of that into our environment too. Absolutely. You know, if, if somebody's uh, grandchild does something spectacular, I want to share it with the whole village. <laughs> well, it's all about connecting. Yes. So it's very, it's very exciting. And so we're, uh, we're pumped up about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so many things going on in communication. Uh, it is you know, the tra transparency that we've talked about is probably our highest priority. And you can see that pretty much everywhere in our culture right now. We have a president that, that can tweet to us and tell us exactly what's on his mind. So right. those kind of portals of information are going to become available here too. And then we recently implemented the whole Granicus, uh, which is a transparency platform yes. for governance. So agenda items and and community comments can happen virtually. They don't necessarily have to come down to meetings. Want you at the meetings, please come down. Mm -hmm. uh, love to have you there. But if you're housebound or out of the area, you can still participate in the governance here by watching the meetings live or commenting, providing an e-comment right. prior to the meeting. Yes. We'll be glad to enter that into the record and share that with board members. So, so many different features that we're adding. It's a, it's a good time. Uh, to be a resident of Laguna Woods Village. <laughs> and it's ease of access. So many different facets of this community can now come into one place, one portal, one point of access. And, Absolutely. And be cohesive. We can really share our stories with each other and learn about what's going on around the community. Part of that too is, and I shared a little bit of this before, but when we hooked all these HD cameras up, <laughs> yes. we had community residents who actually installed them. Right, the task And force. so there's a whole group of, of residents out there who want to participate yes. in our transparency. Mm -hmm. And and we are gonna open our arms wide and invite them in to be a part of our communication uh, and not just try to do it all from the top. That's <laughs> not, not the best communication. When it's going in every direction, mm -hmm. up, down, vertically, horizontally, <laughs> then everybody knows what's going on. And having this, the wider bandwidth that we have, what does that mean to a resident? Well, it means a, a lot of things, and um, a lot of our residents just have uh, internet connections to, to email right. and to, to view things uh, on the internet, but many maybe have a home-based business that requires a lot of bandwidth. That's right. Or, and here's probably the, the best reason, a lot of them want to access uh, TV and media in a different way. They don't want to have, and I'm afraid Paul won't like this, but <laughs> we probably have 200 <laughs> channels here that no one watches. But when you buy these packages, you get, they all, all, you get all of it. Right. Well, some people find that irritating, and so they want to not have that and just buy Things what they watch. want. Right. If they want to go to Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or whatever they want to do, right. and they'll access that directly and only watch things that they like and mm -hmm. not click up and down the channels like you and I do. <laughs> so that allows them to do that. With the bandwidth we have now, mm -hmm. between say five o'clock and nine o'clock at night, yep. if too many residents decide to do that at the same time, it's incredibly inefficient and slow. Yes. And so this will eliminate that, and so they can access 
virtual services uh, anytime in any way that they choose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a it's independence. Uh, it's freedom from from being forced uh, to view things that you really don't want to view. Exactly. And I appreciate that. It's not for everyone, but a lot of our residents have asked for it. And a part of that programming, of course, will be all of the meetings and updates, and even all of the programming here from Village Television. Well, those will all be available as well. Yes, as a absolutely. part of that uh, a la carte programming. Yes. Well, yeah. now since you can access all of our meetings either live or mm -hmm. recorded, it's not quite up yet, but in a few days, um, through our website. I mean, if, for those who want to just get totally off the grid, off, <laughs> off the cable, we don't want you to get off the cable. We want you on the cable, <laughs> right. but I know there are residents who just want to want to have total control yes. over what comes through their TV, then they can do that through Netflix or, or, or Hulu and then watch our programming at their desktop. True. No and problem. then a part of this branding and the social media outreach, you also have some flyers that are being uh, produced in-house. And you took a look at those at the meeting? Yes, yes. Well, we're, even though we have 10,000 uh, manners with internet connection, yes. that's still, we have 2,700 or so without it. Right. And so we need to communicate with those folks as well. We would certainly like to connect every manor in here mm -hmm. and, and to provide a, a desktop or a laptop to everyone who mm -hmm. would like to view us that way. And, and I have some <laughs> ideas about doing that oh, that you we're going to explore. Oh, well, good. Not today, but we're going to explore. All right. And uh, we have to communicate with those folks too. Yeah. So that means a lot of flyers and pamphlets and different things that we make available uh, at clubhouses, uh, at the front desk here at the community center and elsewhere. We don't want to leave anyone behind. Everybody needs to have an opportunity to know what's going on to participate. It's a lot more efficient uh -huh. and, and less costly if we do that digitally. Yes. Um, printing things and mailing things is a very expensive and time consuming effort that makes assessments go up. They, they do. Um, and so we're trying to push, put downward pressure on assessments by eliminating inefficient mm -hmm. processes. And mailing and printing things is one of them. And I wouldn't, I have to, can't leave without this pitch. The other one is <laughs> uh, calling our call center to get your guests in. Oh, that's right. I've been right. pushing the heck out of this. Yes. Um, I think we're approaching 1,000 residents are now bringing in their own guests mm -hmm. through Dwelling Live. Yes. So I sent an email out last week to everyone. Uh, we're continuing to push that effort. Uh, it's much more efficient. 360,000 calls a year come into the call center My just goodness. for gate access. <laughs> uh, I have a lot of people who only answer those calls. My, yes. my preference is that many of you, if you're capable, go ahead and download the mobile app and sign your own guests in. Uh, it's much more efficient. You don't have to wait on hold. You don't have to wait in a line. Yes. And you get a nice text or email when your guests arrive. We talked about this. That's right. It looks like you straightened up your hair this week. Uh, <laughs> so That's if you right. need to clean the house or do something before they get there, get it done, you'll right. know when they're here. Well, it sounds, so, it sounds like all of these processes are really streamlining the, the interaction between residents and, of course, everybody who helps us in our community, and you're really putting some great plans in place. It's exciting, and it's a great time, as I said earlier, to be a resident here. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to work here because with all the changes and the excitement, uh, staff is energized, the boards are energized, and many residents, I hear from them every day, uh, are energized. I meet with probably 10 or 15 residents a week and, and while many of them have problems, uh, many of them come in just to share, I really like this or I really like that or can you make this uh, particular thing do something else. So it, it's, uh, it's good to get that feedback and I can feel the energy building in this community. I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it. I feel the same way. I'm new here and I'm blessed to be a part of it as well. It's a great place to be and a great place to work. And thank you for being with us today on the show. Thank you. And letting you. us know a little bit more. I love more. it. I, I guess I'm coming back, huh? Yeah, you got to come back. Come back every Thursday and keep us updated. I'll You'll do, do that? I will. All right, sir. Thank, thank you very you. much. Absolutely. And stay with us. Ken will be right back after this message.